Number one, add to lifestyle website. Haven't done that yet. Number two, film mail day. We're doing that right now. Number three, make a new YouTube intro. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you enjoyed the brand new intro. Today is mail day, and we have a couple of new things to open today. Um, things that I have delayed on for ages. One package I've left unopened for over a year. So with that, let's get started with our very first package. Now this package was sent to me by OTO1 Tech. They have something that is called a defrosting tray. So this right here is called Ice Gone. Now, when I did this whole experiment, this whole uh, review filming footage with steak, I realized a little bit later that you're not supposed to defrost food with warm water. And I did that for one of the controls. So let me explain how I set this up. I have three ribeye prime steaks. I have one that's acting as a control, so there's nothing done to it. It's just sitting on a table in a Ziploc bag. Number two, the next one is actually sitting on the defrosting tray. And number three was in a bath of warm water, which I figured out later, as I mentioned, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to put it in like cold water. So we're gonna go ahead and exclude that variable out and just do a flat out experiment. I'm just gonna show you a very brief time lapse of the steak sitting on a table versus a steak sitting here on the ice gone. So as you can see, the steak sitting on a table, mind you, it was like 90 degrees that day. It was a pretty hot day. The steak sitting on the table is pretty much untouched. It's like frozen, rock solid, and it's gonna be like that for the next maybe three to four hours. Typically, that's all it takes for me to just defrost steak. So when I wake up in the morning, if we're making lunch that day, I'm just gonna throw meat, poultry, fish out on the table and let it sit there. Normally, I would do it with warm water, but now I'm not gonna do that anymore. I didn't know, and I don't wanna wait like four hours, six hours every single time, so there's that. Now next, on the defrosting tray, what's really interesting is that whatever part that the steak is actually touching on the tray is for sure defrosting way more rapidly. You can actually see whatever is in contact with the ice gone is actually defrosting much faster than it was sitting on the table. So with that said, I think it comes to like the first part of my review. If there is meat or just frozen food in general that you're trying to defrost, whatever part that is kind of bent out of a flat plane will defrost much slower because it's obviously not gonna be able to contact the tray. So as you can see in the steak here, whatever parts that are kind of like curved upwards, it's not gonna touch the tray, it's gonna take longer to defrost. With that said though, it's eventually going to even out, of course, because the parts that are in contact are going to, you know, defrost and that becomes less rigid. And from there, the rest of the part is going to sink up onto the tray. Now in terms of structure, it is a pretty rigid piece of metal. It's a little bit heavier than a cutting board, I would say. Um, pretty tiny. Normally, I think you would probably fit maybe one or two steaks. So this is probably enough for like a three person meal at best. The construction is very solid. It also has like this plastic feet, which I think would be very helpful in not scratching the surfaces of your countertops. So overall, it is an interesting product. I think it's definitely way more for like home cooks, of course, because I don't think chefs would actually be freezing their food to begin with. But you know, bottom line, it works. I think it would have been really nice if you're able to like actually cut on this board so that way it doesn't take up space on top of a cutting board. It'd be nice if like you can actually combine a cutting board with a defrosting tray. I think that would have made it much more functional in my own kitchen. So if you are someone who defrosts their lunch, their dinner, I don't think typically breakfast would be defrozen. But if you typically defreeze your lunch or your dinner, I can definitely see this working out for you versus like sticking it out on a kitchen countertop. It's much faster, of course. Like I said, if it could double up as a cutting board, I definitely would be using something like this way more often. Um, unless you can cut on this material. I haven't really tried because I'm scared to like just scratch material like this. The last thing I wanna mention about this tray is the one thing I was worried about is if you have like meat sitting on here for a while or like fish juices, would all that gunk kind of just like stick out on the tray and all that nasty gunk just kind of just hardens? Well, luckily this thing cleans out pretty easily as well. So with that said, this is not a sponsored review, but I was given this for free. If you're interested in this defrosting tray, I will link that down below. And with that said, let's go on to package number two. So the next two are things that I purchased myself, but 
Um, I have no idea what this is actually. I totally forgot what I bought in the mail and I figured I can save it for some unboxing like we are doing today. I will tell you now though that it is definitely board game related. I just forget, forget all the things that I've ordered. Oh, okay. I know exactly what this is. This is from One Sharp Joe Crafts. I will link his Etsy shop down below, but it is a wooden insert for Marvel Champions, a game that I still have not been able to play yet. However, I did actually, um, you'll see uh, my updated Shelf of Shame in a bit, but I did update my board game shelf and I got rid of 30-ish games. Honestly, the majority of our move was pretty much board game boxes. I think I had like 10 full-on like Costco ginormous black yellow boxes filled with board games. That was a pain to carry over, but I got rid of 30 of them. So you guys proud because I feel like 30 is a good number to get rid of. And I, my shelves are still full, so. Do I have a problem? Probably. But inserts though. One more package left open today, but if you are interested in sending me any mail at all, I'll leave my PO box down below so we can do some fun unboxings on Sundays or some day of the week. This package right here is from Pete's Pirate Life. So this is from his shop and I was recently inspired to open this finally. He's right now doing like a 30 day challenge on like writing things in a notebook and I figured, you know what? This is the best time to be actually using this. Dang, look at that packaging. One day I would love to have some packaging like that. That looks so beautiful. That's the metallic ink of his signature in the back. It is zip sealed. And in this package we have, I actually had no idea that this came in a set of three. I thought it was only one, but this is just so beautiful. You know, you have like little things that you collect or sometimes don't even always use. Aside from board games, I have a thing for notebooks. I also have a thing for pens, like matte black pens and dioramas or like figurines of like Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, different animes that I'm super into. Um, notebooks, there's actually a dedicated shelf now that I have specifically for blank notebooks or notebooks that have been barely written on. So this is his Peace Pirate Life notebook. Check out the design here on the back. It's all pirate ship themed. We even have like octopus tentacles coming off on the back side here. Notebook itself is stapled in. There are dots instead of lines for the paper itself. And then last part of the packaging, it says write it or lose it. Three of these, can't wait to be using these to write stuff down and hopefully cross them off. Now I need to go work on this tutorial for the Dice Tower. I also have a couple other things that I need to film board game wise, which you will see this week actually. And on top of that, um, I have a graduation poses that I'm finally, finally doing, recording it right after this today. I can't wait to show you a little bit more about what I do outside of board games as well. With that, thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you all in the next video.